Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com renew to learn more. What's going on, Pop Culture Field Manual Podcasters? Welcome back to the PCFM Podcast. That was kind of repetitive, but it's okay. My name <laughs> is Cameron Fath. Yeah, I know. My name is Cameron Fath. There's more. There's some more repetitiveness. I'm former Army Ranger, and with me, as always, my co-host. Israel Wright, former Green Beret. It's good to be back, folks, and this is your special September Super Duper Mega Ultra Podcast for our patrons and we are so happy that yes. you're all here. Thank you for joining us on this episode. We hope you join us on many more episodes. You truly are the Captain Price to our uh, pretty much anyone, because anyone would be proud to serve with Captain Price. Absolutely. That is 100% true. Yes, our patrons, this one is just for you. We are so thankful that you are here. And we just wanted to do a quick, warm welcome to our new patrons. Yay. And that is going to be Rom. Josh Quim, Kim Tolfinson. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those are our new ones. And maybe, maybe Bobby J. Burns. Maybe you're getting lucky. Maybe Matthew 04. And then Automatic. I think I said him last time. So you got lucky, man. I'm pretty <laughs> you sure. You get the double shout out. You got the double shout out, but that is okay. Welcome to our new ones. Uh, we uh, appreciate you having, uh, appreciate having you here in our PCSM, PCFM family. And I could not talk today for some <laughs> weird reason. All right. I got to slow. Maybe I'm having like a mini stroke. I don't know. <laughs> you're just have, you're just frustrated from your packaging, your UPS packaging problems. Yeah, no. <laughs> Huge UPS problem today, folks. Huge <laughs> PCFM problems with UPS. So just don't mind me. I'm just, you know, I'm just not in the mood right now for the UPS. But I am in the mood for war. Yes. And that is the theme of today's Patreon exclusive episode. We have been fighting. For as long as we can remember. I mean, Hugh monologue here. Cain Gears of War. Abel. Yeah, since Cain and Abel. But unfortunately, that is a lot of ground to cover. <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of problems today. That is a lot of go- that is a lot of ground to cover. So we figure that we're just gonna start from the American Revolutionary War to the current war. Or not current, it's it's over. Uh, Afghanistan, you, Iraq. You've officially declared it over, my friend. I've yeah, I've declared it over. It is over. The Iraq war and the oh the global war on terror is over. It's done. So bunzo. Now if you disagree with me, let us know. You're a terrorist in the comment section. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know. I'm a terrorist. You're you're a terrorist. I'm not a terrorist. How dare you? Yeah. But pretty much the the premise of this episode is we're gonna go through every major conflict or war the U.S. has been involved in and try to find a piece of cinema that portrays it positively or is just, you know, one of our picks. Or there may not be any of them. Yeah, we've got, there's one or two in here we're like, uh, I've never seen any, I've never seen any pop culture about this. Yeah, no, there might be like one or two from like 1930, but I wasn't going to watch it, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I was not going to waste my time watching that shit, but uh, <laughs> hell, it's going to be a fun one. I think so. We're going to learn a lot, um, especially with me. I like to know the dates of all these wars because yeah. why not? It's part of history. It's yeah. part of what we did. And before we start with the Revolutionary War, I, the Revolutionary War, I just had an honorable mention. The French and Indian War uh, mm. happened before. I think, well, I think it was in like 17, 17, like 40s or something. Let's see. 
French and uh, 1756, I think, was the, the series of battles led to the official British Declaration in 1756. Yeah, 1754 through 1763, according to the, the very 70, accurate Wikipedia. Also called the Seven Years' War, yeah. Yeah, so the French and Indian War. I, I wanted to throw this on there just because that's a lot of Ranger history. Um, oh. Rangers, yeah, Rangers go all the way back to the French and Indian War. Um, uh, so that's cool. And there's a really famous movie that I want to feature for an honorable mention called The Last of the Mohicans. Oh, such a good movie. It's such a good movie. And it takes place during the French and Indian War. And I mean, we're like for some reason the Tomahawk, uh, it's not for some reason. It's literally this movie. This is the movie why everybody wants to use the Tomahawk. <laughs> Daniel but, Day yeah, Lewis, it is, man. Yeah, it's an awesome movie. I, I remember we had we had a family day at Regiment one time. And they set up a tomahawk throwing like area, and they put on a six hour uh, rotation of the Last of the Mohicans theme song, and it like <laughs> it played for like <laughs> yeah, it played for six hours while everybody was just throwing tomahawks at a block of wood. It was pretty sick, but yeah, if you haven't seen Last Mohicans, you won't regret it. It's really good. Um, the synopsis is pretty much the last member of a dying Native American tribe, the Mohicans. Right. Uncas, his father, Chingachukuk, and his adopted half-white brother, Hawkeye, live in peace along British colonists. But when the daughters of a British colonel are kidnapped by a traitorous scout, Hawkeye and Uncas must rescue them from in the crossfire of a gruesome military conflict of which they wanted no part, the French and Indian War. Really cool, real some real gruesome combat sequences. Yeah. Um. But yeah, definitely worth the check out. Yeah. Th- I, this this one's a classic. This one has uh, uh, Daniel Day Lewis does a great job in this one, and uh, it's kind of a sad one too because it's like kind of about you know the you know everything the westward expansion you know into yeah it's a genocide of a Native American. Well, hey, whoa, 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 whoa! I don't want to go that far. <laughs> it's just a kind of a sad state of affairs and what happens when sometimes when di- different civilizations with different values meet up over a long period. Yep, of time. they uh, destroy everything in their path, yep. and then uh, nothing yep. nothing remains except for America. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I'll finish that one off for you, pal. But anyways, honorable mention, Last of the Mohicans, came out in 1992, but definitely worth the look. Uh, but without further ado, let's get it on, folks. Let's get some. Revolutionary War. Right. One movie and only one movie deserves to be in this category. <laughs> that would be called, that would be The Patriot. The Patriot, yeah. yes. Mel Gibson. We've talked about it. Uh, many, many a times. And it's actually interesting because Benjamin, Benjamin Martin, which uh, Mel Gibson plays, is a French and Indian war hero. So he's coming back from, you know, uh, let's see, Ooh, when is yeah, 17? So that would be, yeah, it's 20 years ago around that he fought in the French and Indian war. Yeah, he he's was, haunted he, by his That's past. where he got his tomahawk from. Yeah, because he fought. Mm-hmm. Probably with the natives, most likely, most likely. But, uh, yeah, The Patriot, I mean, it, it's one of those movies that really makes you proud to be an American because we really stuck it to those damn Brits. <laughs> well, you know, there's another one that we can honorably mention in this one. that Maybe it's not the category winner, but the, there's a musical 1776 that's uh, about the founding you fathers. Lost me in mus- you lost me at musical, oh, pal. Come on, you uncultured swine. It's Oh, it's so I good. So. It's a Tony Award winning uh, play. Probably not ever going to get made today. Yeah. Uh, uh, ever again, but it's just about the founding fathers bringing the bringing the Constitution together and writing it up. And there's lots of, you know, the, the thing about this one is I, I've seen a production of this, and it is long. Like it's a full play and a full musical. It's not like they try to skimp on time to like let's get to the singing. Like there are long sections of weighty dialogue in this <laughs> in that play, and. uh uh, Wait, there's a difference between like a play and a musical. Isn't just a musical a play with music? Yeah, essentially. I mean, you know, a play, a, you know, a play doesn't have any music, and it could be, you know, uh, I mean, well, yeah, but uh, yeah, a musical is there, there, but there's like rock operas, or or rock there are operas. musicals. Uh, there's musicals where there are no, there's essentially no dialogue, right? Like, mm. um, it's all a song. It's all a song. I'm trying to think of. I mean, wasn't Rent? I think Rent was like a rock opera. I think everything was sung in that one. But anyway, getting off course. Um, also, just maybe an honorable mention within the re- within the category of the Revolutionary War was Assassin's Creed Three. Uh, Assassin's Creed Three during the uh, 
Revolutionary War? Because I think it was I a have no idea. I think it had like a Native American background. Um, real world events of the uh, but, 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 uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, the main story is set in 18th century before, during, and after the American Revolution, 1760 to 1783. Uh-huh. So, I actually, this is one of my sad, my sad gaming moments is that I actually own the first three Assassin's Creed games, and I have not, I actually own four of them. I own the first three and Black Flag, and I haven't played any of them. It's really sad. Oh, that is so pathetic, man. <laughs> You're such a loser. <laughs> uh, yeah, cry. Let's move cry, on. Cry, quickly, cry, Quickly before I Luke, have to give away my nerd card. Yeah, that's fine. But yeah, that's, you know, the Patriot, 1776. Um, what else? Did you mention some another one? No, no, or just no, uh, 1776. Oh, and Assassin's and Creed. Assassin's Creed 3, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the Revolutionary War, the war that started off our beautiful country, um, you know, Patriot's a great example of that. Just wanted to highlight those ones. But moving on down the war train. Oh, you know what? Uh, Hold on, man. Let oh, what? What do you got? Real, real quick. Not a movie, but a series. Uh, John Adams. John Adams. It's an H- it was an HBO series about the life of John Adams. It had Paul Giamatti playing playing John Adams. And it was basically oh. like a biographical thing. So it, basically, it, it starts just before the Revolutionary War. And then ends not too long after it. So it's got all the major players like Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin, George Washington. Yeah, sure. Um, but that's a good one. It's not just the war, but his life after the fact. It goes all the way up until him. Him and actually Thomas Jefferson, I think, died on the same day, which was which is oh, what? Yeah, that's super interesting. But I had uh, no idea. Super cool series. It's on HBO. If you got HBO Max, you could watch it. It's not all wartime, but it's uh, well, you know. You know, well, I, back then, I mean, I, I was going to say the I learned, you know, you learn more and more about the founding fathers and, uh, you know, they're obviously highly venerated and as well. They should be because they were men of their time and they were the men that we needed, but they weren't like all necessarily like the best men, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Hell no, dude. Are you kidding? Like, there's no way these dudes were just like perfect in every way. No, 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 certainly. Yeah, not, but, not uh, whatsoever. But uh, yeah. yeah, but obviously they did what they did and they deserved the, you know the glory of what they did because right. we wouldn't be a country without them exactly. but they yeah they had their vendettas absolutely i mean i'm not gonna sit here and be like no they were perfect in every way and we should be <laughs> just like them absolutely not they lived in a- the 1800s like <laughs> we're like, in a different time now i would like to be fearless like george washington was on the battlefield because by all accounts he was fearless on the battlefield like he led from yeah. the front he had horses shot out from underneath it he'd get holes True in leader. his coat you know uh from bullets yeah. risen by but anyway uh, maybe you know, I'm sure we can improve on the on the characters. Absolutely. <laughs> we're moving down the war train here. We're moving on to the War of 1812, and you know, for this selection, not, actually, not a whole lot. <laughs> not a whole lot of like actual like Hollywood like big feature Hollywood movies. The only ones I found were from like 1930 to like 1950, yeah, black and white. And we all know, years. if you know me, I'm not touching that. I'm not <laughs> yeah. touching that with the. <laughs> There's three, three, three movies about Buccaneers. Last of the Buccaneer, the Buccaneer, and the Buccaneer. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I'm not gonna waste time and watch those. <laughs> There's no way. But I did find the the newest thing I found that sort of highlighted the War of 1812 was a show called Taboo, uh, featuring Tom Hardy as the lead role. And uh, but it takes place during Britain because I mean, obviously, the War of 1812. We went back and we stuck it to them Brits again. Um, but uh, or we didn't. Who won the war? Well, of I mean, it was one of those ones where it wasn't like our finest hour, but we did ultimately, I think, win. It was between us and Britain, and they called it kind of the second the second war of independence. And uh, there was a treaty signed at the end of it. I think we like they the Treaty of Paris. Siege. No, the, it's uh, the Treaty of Ghent, uh, oh, Treaty February seventeenth, eighteen fifteen. But um, like it, like it wasn't the best war that we ever had, but we did actually win, and it actually went a long way for like growing national pride. Like we were so proud that we like stuck it to the Brits again. Yeah. Um, and so, but like it was, a, it, I think it was a lot of naval based battles too. Uh, yeah, no, like, the tra- Yeah, it was. It was a. I mean, that's what taboo is about. Is about naval ships. Oh, really? Um, yeah. It, it, seems, it, it looks good, but Tom it's Hardy being but it's from the guy. British perspective. It's like he's trying to sell ships to the Brits, and uh, he's British or something like that. Okay. But, oh, yeah, Treaty of Paris ended the American Revolution. Okay, Treaty of Ghent. 
There we go. See, this is going to be so educational, folks. I'm so excited about this because we're learning. We're learning stuff. Like, we're not both subject at. Just because we're in the military doesn't mean we know everything about the military. No, certainly not. Uh, more, or about American history. More on the latter. Yeah, we know. Bro, we, there's, the more you find, the more you know, the more you realize there's so much more to know about military oh, yeah. history. You could just go. That's Absolutely. why there's categories. You know, there's period time periods that people specialize in because there's just so much history. Yeah, not to mention there's literally entire college degrees wrapped around like history of war <laughs> that a lot of generals have to take. Yep. Um, but yeah, all right. So I guess all we got for that War of 1812 is taboo and a couple Buccaneer movies, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> you guys, if love you know, stuff. if you know of any yes. good pieces from War of 1812, please let us know because I was getting frustrated. I was like, there is no way this was a, a major, you know quote-unquote u.s conflict in history i'm surprised there's not like some big budget film made about it um but yeah like i said if you know of one let us know or if you've seen the buccaneers and it is not a waste of time let us know as well i'd love to check them out there were some good Uh, but moving on moving on here getting down to the mexican american war 1846 through 1848 not a long one in the history of not a long one not a long one by any means but i found a movie which honestly the plot's going to send like would not sound interesting to you know american loyalists <laughs> <laughs> but uh it has i found a movie uh, it's called one man's hero from 1998 and it has um what's the guy from the sniper tom berenger yeah it has tom berenger in it and it's based on a true story of the saint patrick's brigade so basically one man hero is set during the mexican american war irish american john riley who's uh who is our sniper guy, um, John Berenger. Uh, he deserts his army unit after being denied permission to attend mass. So, swimming across the Rio Grande River into Mexico, Riley joins the Mexican army and leads a rogue unit of 200 men, largely men jailed by the U.S. Army, for disobedience into battle against the states. And then he's captured, court-martialed by the American military. Riley is a horse-whipped and branded with a D on his face, forever marking him as a deserter. Oh, snap. Wow, that's based on a true story? I guess so. That's nuts, man. Wow. It yeah, it sounds... really makes... I wonder What's if... up? Oh, I, I, it kind of sounds like Dances with Wolves a little bit, because he ends up kind of yeah. going native. Uh, yeah. And leaving. But not like, you know... I mean, the, the natives were already here, and like, but like the Mexicans had their own thing. <laughs> well, they, yeah, I mean, that was kind of a big deal. I, I forget exactly where the lines were drawn, but, you know... I don't know, Mexico had most of, like, they had, like, California, New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, that whole kind of western, southwestern area. And then sure. I think, I don't know if we bought it from them after, I forget if they bought it from them after the Mexican-American War, but they kind of just, like, gave it all. They're like, ah, we'll take everything south of the Rio Grande, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of people say we cheated them out of it because the, the government in Mexico at the time was highly corrupt. Uh-huh. Um. I think, and that's why some people were like, you Wait. basically stole it from a corrupted dictator that we didn't want. So and he's like, changed. you bought it from a dictator. Yeah. <laughs> Until things change. And they were like, no, 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 no. We have the receipt. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter who it's from. It's the receipt. You must respect it. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, I, I looked at the trailer of this movie and it it doesn't look good. <laughs> but I, mean, I was like, oh. Tom Berenger, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm, I'm trying to think of, it looks familiar to me, but I'm sure I never saw it. That was like when I was yeah. in high school. Yeah, I mean, it didn't look like a high production movie. It definitely looks like a a classic Tom Berenger B movie. Uh, but uh, yeah, I thought it was worth mentioning. But unless you got any other ones for this one, Izzy, you ready to move on? No, man. I uh, let's move on to the uh, let's move on to the Civil War. I feel like this one is ripe territory. There's books. Oh there's yeah, movies. There's television shows. There's miniseries. Civil War. I mean, it tore us apart. You know, it's the brother the battling point, yeah. brother. Literally. There's so much uh, good material here. Uh, yeah, the highest ca- American casualty producing war of all of history. Right, right. That's because we were killing each other. <laughs> <laughs> but I was surprised. I forget, was that like a... Oh, go ahead. I said that was like a trivia question or something. And I was just like, what is that? I forgot where I was, but I thought it was Vietnam. And then I realized they're like, no, it's a civil war, you idiot. Because we literally, every person that died on each side was technically an American death. And I was like, oh, you're so right. (laughs) 
But yeah, a lot of a lot of easy picks from this one. I mean, we've talked about Glory a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot. But I mean, it's still, it's just, I mean, it's still one of those movies that just you you can't take it off the list just because it's so good. Yeah, it's it's it kind of I, I if we're talking about definitive films, like they, if you could only watch one film about an era or a war, it would probably be Glory uh, for me for the Civil War uh, because yeah. it kind of encapsulates, you know, they it's they it's about slaves becoming free and then they end up fighting for the country and and uh and it's about but it's about brotherhood across those lines as well with both class and and racial lines absolutely um, and it's you know it's about leadership and and so it yeah and uh, i i would say that's definitely what john carter have you seen john carter i didn't know that john carter <laughs> yeah. took place during that era because obviously he gets yeah it's it's during the, it's like right it's either between during the Civil War or right after. Uh, I threw it on there because I rewatched it the other day because I like it. I'll be honest. I think John Cutter is a very entertaining Disney movie. Uh-huh. Um, and it has like violence in it. And not to mention like the main uh, the main female in it is a looker. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's a very pretty lady. Don't tell my fiance I said that. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I, I found it very entertaining. I heard they're going to make a sequel to it nowadays because no it, it was kind of like one of those one movies that I think it did terribly. So they're just like, yeah, we're not like the Golden Compass, how they had this killer cast, yeah. but like it didn't do well at all. And yeah. they planned on it because it totally is like plotted to a sequel and they just never did it. So like the movie is just a giant cliffhanger for Golden Compass. But uh, John Carter, yeah, he like goes back to Mars at the end and like ends up living there. And uh, and he's like got superpowers because the. Uh, the gravity on Mars is much different. Right, right. So when he goes there, he like has super strength and like he can jump like super, super far and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, which makes us Earth goers seem super awesome. Yeah. Well, you know what I liked about this kind of sci-fi? It's based on a series of books. And so the the idea that his physical body, like he has a physical body down on Earth while he's up there. And mm. like and and so when he comes like at the at the end of the movie he he gets betrayed and tricked and that dude sends him back to Earth and he like wakes up and he's covered in like decades worth of dust, dust. yeah yeah uh, and and like everyone around him is like die you know, like all the dudes are skeletons in the cave where he was at and so yeah he finally like reveals to I don't know if it's his nephew or his grandson he's like you got to keep me locked in this room. So that my body can be safe because my consciousness is going to be transported up to Mars. I thought it was, that was kind of an interesting, I don't know, interesting sci-fi or fantasy kind of idea. No, it does. I think it you know has the historical thing because he was like a soldier. He was like a rough rider. Yeah. Um, and then, but he had nothing. He didn't want anything to do with it anymore. He just wanted to get his gold because he found it in the mountain. And then he like came across one of those beings that like. Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com backslash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. He shot dead and then took his little medallion thing, and that's how I got to Mars. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a very entertaining movie. I like I like monster design. Like that's one thing that I find very interesting. Mm. So like movies that have like a bunch of crazy like effects and like costumes and whatnot. I'm like that is super cool. Plus it has like a fantasy aspect to it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm John Carter was super. Sometime. You should, man. I think it's 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 entertaining. I mean, don't watch it like for you know if you're expecting an Oscar performance. <laughs> uh, but it's it's just a good old fun watch, dude. I think it's it's just entertaining, especially for a Disney movie. That's the one thing. It's just like it's still, it has violence in it. There's like you know, it's like the Pirates of the Caribbean, but like fantasy. You know, I have a personal connection to that movie. Oh, you do? Yes. Let's hear it. 
So there what, was Pirates the, of the Caribbean or John Carter? John Carter. <laughs> um, I, uh, the, I had a buddy of mine who did uh, stand-in work for Taylor Kitsch back then. And so the part where he is uh, – like he's he gets really mad at one point and he flashes back between like – he's fighting this battle and then it flashes between that and when he's like burying his wife in the rain. Yeah. And like all the shots where he's burying his wife in the rain where it doesn't show his front, that's like my buddy – being being the being john carter <laughs> really yeah. my, that's super cool my dude. buddy will barker uh he's an actor and uh and so that's his uh he's like when he's like clutching his hand over the medallion like in the rain like it's like that he's like that's my hand that's my hand <laughs> that's my hand that's my hand okay i'm gonna retract one of my saying the one something that i just said yeah uh lynn collins is looks much better in the movie than she does in real life. I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, she's not looking too good right now. Um, well, it's like twenty <laughs> years later, you know. Well, no, I'm even looking at pictures of her like back then. Like she left. She definitely looks way cooler in like barbarian, uh, like oh, clothing okay, gotcha. or whatnot like than she does Martian like normally. Princess. Yeah, like she should probably dress like that if she uh, like all the time. Oh, but, she's got uh, nice shoulders. Okay, we're going to get in trouble, man. All right, moving on. <laughs> Cold Mountain. You've mentioned Cold Mountain before, right, on our Civil War episode? Yeah, Cold Mountain, I would I would put that in a str- as a strong contender for, like, the definitive Civil War movie uh, because it follows a, a southern soldier, right? It's, yeah. It's, um, uh, oh, man, come on. It's freaking Nicole Kidman and, uh, uh, oh, wait. Well, let me sing a song while I type it into my computer. Um, it's Jude Law. Gee, Jiminy Christmas. Uh, Jude Law, yeah. And pretty much an all-star cast. Uh, basically, he, he lives in the South, and it's it's he starts falling in love with Nicole Kidman, and they literally have one kiss, and then the draft for the South, like the Civil War starts, and he gets drafted in and conscripted into the Southern Army. And then he basically kind of – it's kind of like he sees the horrors of war and he keeps thinking about his love back in the the southern state where he was at. So he he defects. He basically runs away or uh, what is it? He deserts. And uh, so the the movie is his journey going through kind of the war-torn south back to her. It's kind of like a dark Forrest Gump. It's like a journey story and he meets all these characters. Natalie Portman's in it. Philip Seymour Hoffman's in it. Charlie Hunnam's in it kind of before he was like super huge. Um, and all the while back at home, Nicole Kidman and Renee Zellweger and um, uh, Brendan Gleeson are all there and they're all, um, uh, they have to put up and fight with uh, kind of the local gangsters that are around there. So it's a, it's a great, it's like an epic film. It's beautifully shot. Anthony Mangella, uh directed it. Who's directed a lot Mangilla. of great Mangella. 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 Mangela. Mangelin. Man Mangelus. Man portable. Um Man portable. But uh but yeah, super uh, J- Jack White's in it. He plays like a wandering minstrel dude and um but really yeah, really good movie. Uh highly recommend it. if you're into the if you're into the Civil War era movies, it's it's just like beautifully done and and kind of tragic and yeah, just very sad Interesting. So before we move on, real quick mention, honorable mention. Have you ever seen the free, uh, the what? What do you call it? a free state of Jones? No, I've heard about it though. It's based on true story. Yeah, I right? Yeah, no, it's really cool. It's Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's. I think it's. It. I saw it a while back. It, I thought it was really good. It's pretty much uh, this guy. He's a, a defiant Southern farmer. Newt Knight is Matthew McCa- uh, McConaughey's character, and he's uh, he's fighting for the Confederacy. But then he pretty much abandons, like he becomes a deserter, and then he gets a bunch of small farmers and local slaves, and then he uh, leads an uprising in Jones County to secede from the Confederacy, mm. and then he creates the quote-unquote free state of Jones, and they, they basically, it's it's like a giant symbol of defiance, and like his, uh, in the South, like years later, his family is like paying for his mistakes because they label him as like a uh, um, kind of a... Uh, like a deserter. So, like, mm. his actions kind of uh, go against what the South stood for. And uh, it had uh, reoccurring effects for, like, his descendants. But then at the end of the movie, it has, like, a happy ending and shit. But uh, 
But yeah, no, that's a pretty good one. It's shot really well too, and there's some good old acting in it. Uh, that's cool, man. I gotta, I, I gotta start a war movie list. Uh, and and that's definitely got to be on. Got to got to be. On. I like Matthew McConaughey. He's done. He's done. A yeah, lot. he's good. I just watched him the other day again for like the twelfth time. So <laughs> he's in the walls. <laughs> he he is but. the ghost. Oh, he is the ghost at the end. He's the ghost. Okay, so that's the Civil War, folks. Moving on to our Spanish American War, eighteen eighty nine. So we had a lot of wars. You even for this episode, you even had to uh, cut out some conflicts. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, you know, because we we've been a lot of fights, you guys. A lot of my we've Rock been. Yeah, no, let me let me. You know, I should have said this in the beginning of the episode. The U.S likes to fight okay (laughs) like we've been in a lot of conflict especially from like 1750 to like 1900 like we are in it we are in the nitty-gritty and there is way too many conflicts to list on it so i just had to go with the most like known conflicts so for the spanish-american war i found this film it's called 1898 our Last Men in the Philippines. It was filmed in 2016, or at least in 2016. Um, it's based on true events. The film recounts the final days of the Sp- uh, Spanish Empire's last colony. Uh, so basically from the perception of the other side, not from the American soldiers. But 50 men were sent to reclaim a village of Bilar in the Philippines, where against all odds, the soldiers managed to hold off an army of native Tagalogs for nearly a year. An epic and true military story which combines adventure, amazing characters, and enthralling exotic locations. So maybe we could do uh, it looks like a foreign film. Maybe we could have an episode sometime of like some great foreign war movies because we we tend to talk mostly about American war movies because there's a ton of them. But uh, there's been some really good ones that uh, that that have come out. I know that there's one, what is it, Kasari? That's like that's about a bunch of Sikh warriors back in like Afghanistan, way back in the day. You know, like world pre World War One or something. Yeah, dude, I'm all I'm all about like seeing the conflict from all the other sides. Yeah, um, I know we have another one on this list farther down uh, that I actually was super excited to find, um, and I'm excited to tell you about it because it has a weird weird little aspect to it. <laughs> um, but for this movie, I thought it was cool. So this was this was when like you know Teddy Roosevelt was president, right? Yeah. Yeah, because this was like the Philippines where we got. Uh, oh wait, see where, was that when Teddy Roosevelt? I think so. I'm pre- or, or he was serving in the military. Okay. This was like Teddy Roosevelt's. Like this is where he was. Yeah, um, you know, the Rough Riders is when he got kind of his yeah. reputation or something like that. Yeah. So the Spanish American War. Let's see. Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, he's the hero of the Spanish American War. Yeah, this is where he read. This is where he led the the Rough Riders. Was in the Spanish American War, mm. um, and that's we got. Uh, it was like in Cuba. Let's see, Spain and the United States. Um, pretty much, what did we get out of it? We got like I think we got. Uh, hmm, what is it? it? We definitely got Guam from it, and then we right, we Guam. made the Philippines. Um, we didn't get the Philippines, but like we liberated for. Uh, for freedom and the freedom name of freedom throughout the word I'm looking for here. So I'm just going to stick to simple terms because I'm a simple 10 co-ownership of Puerto Rico, Guam and the Philippine islands from Spain to the United States and granted the United States temporary control of Cuba, Cuba. Yeah. So at that time, so yeah, the movie though, 18 and 98 shows it from the Spanish soldiers perspective. So I thought that was kind of fun because I was like, okay, so are like there, obviously, like, ref- did we not find any Spanish American war movies? No, dude. Oh wow. Which is surprising because you think like there would be a movie about the Rough Riders. Yeah, nobody. Have there ever really been any movies about Teddy Roosevelt? I don't think so. Let's see here. Movies about Teddy. <laughs> Night at the museum. All right. There you go, Robin Williams. Rip. Yeah, Robin Williams. Uh, yeah, no, there's not a lot. <laughs> That's interesting. It's Not interesting a lot of mainstream. To, it's interesting to note what conflicts capture, you know, entertainment or Hollywood or people's imaginations and which ones don't. Um, yeah. I wonder if there's, a, Very if there's intriguing. a threat. If you guys have any theories about that, why certain, you know, why maybe certain eras or wars or conflicts are more 
in pop culture than others. Uh, yeah, let us know. That's, that's an interesting theory, you know. Yeah, no, it totally is. But yeah, folks, that's Spanish American War. So we had the 1898, our last men in the Philippines. I'm definitely want to check that one out because it's a foreign film. Yeah, and uh, I would definitely like to see what those dudes went through. Because I mean, you you put all sides away, right? And it's just like at the end of the day, these are soldiers doing their job. Mm-hmm. Um, so regardless of the side, uh, the side they're fighting on, they all experience pretty much the similar things. So I'm kind of interest, interested to see how they fought off those Tagalogs. That would be cool. Tagalogs, I think, is, is how it's... Tagalogs? Yeah, no, I, I agree with what you're saying. Uh, there's, I think, universal aspects to war fighting that any warrior can relate to. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of it, we're on to World War I. Uh, finally, something something we can talk a lot about. <laughs> yeah, these older ones, they're like, woo. I'm like, come on, but they're little, they're they're tough pickings, that's for sure for the the earlier conflicts, except for the Civil War and the American Revolution. Right. Uh, but we're we're finally onto some wars that have been portrayed in pop culture more times than you can count on your hands. Um, so, I mean, I think one of the most like at least most recent ones that has been done very well is 1917. Oh, what a great movie! It was solid. I mean, yeah, I, I just like can't like believe a- like. Uh, the way they shot it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shooting it like a one shot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I feel like there was a resurgence of interest in World War One. I. I mean, maybe more recently, I think maybe, maybe it's I don't know if there are any survivors of World War One around anymore. I think they have all passed on. And yeah. I or mean, they're like over 100 years old. Yeah, man. Yeah. World. And- Actually, no, they would have to be like a six. I would say like 16 year olds fought in World War One. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, no, they would be like, yeah, they, there's no way any of them survive. Yeah. They have to be over 110 years old. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just maybe it's just because uh, we had this one and then we had another one on our list, which we can talk about later. They shall not grow old. And uh, just it's just really interesting that there's there was kind of a yeah, it's kind of a resurgence, you know, of that one. What? Yeah. What do you like about 1917? I like the way it's filmed. Yeah. Um, Steve, it's Steven Spielberg, right? No, this is uh, the no. guy who did American Beauty and I think even uh, Skyfall. Okay. Yeah. I like about it, the way it's filmed, it makes it really seem gritty. Like, I mean, back then, like, Sam, you didn't Sam have Mendes, much. Yeah. yeah, you didn't have much as a soldier, like... We're issued pretty cool equipment now, but like back then it was all grit. Like that was your big, that was your biggest piece of equipment was just how tough are you? Um, so, I mean the trench warfare, I think anything about world war one is crazy. If you can, if you can combine the cinematic like technology of nowadays with like the basically world war one, I think you have a winner regardless. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just the, you know what those men had to go through and just the fact following these two dudes, through like this entire like almost a western front you know yeah uh was I, I, it was just really well done i think it made an excellent war film no i, I what'd you I, like about it i um i mean it was really good i think the performances are all amazing uh it, like and it's an all-star cast too like you talk we talked about cameos a while back and like everybody has a cameo in this one uh there's there's so many big time actors that could in their own rights head out movies and they just have like little scenes, uh, you know, um, really, really touching. I think what they do a good job with that guy is, uh, uh, the, the main dude is that you follow him throughout the entire film and you really get how tired he is at the end, like how he's just, yeah. And then he just pushes himself that last run across as they're uh, across the field, as they're starting to starting the charging, like bums into those guys, you know, there was like like behind the scenes stuff where like they only had like, you know, they could only do this once because it was so expensive. And yeah. uh, and like he bumped into dudes and he tripped and he fell and he's just like, God, he had to keep on going because they couldn't stop. They couldn't cut, you know, I keep going. Yeah, I would love to see the director like screaming during that scene. <laughs> get up, get back up. We're racing. Get up. Just get, keep going. <laughs> get that would have been cool. Oh. Uh, but do you want one of these movies on this list? I actually just saw, uh, and I thought it was really good. And it actually, I even texted you when I was watching it for some fun facts. Um, but be, Beneath Hill 60, I thought it was a newer movie because it like just was available for streaming, but apparently it was made in 2010. And like, so 
Wow, it was such, I, I really liked it. So it basically told the true story of Oliver Woodward. And he was a, uh, Austra- I think he was Australian, Australian captain. Yeah. Uh, it's 1916, Woodward must tear himself from new young love to go to the mud and carnages of the Western Front. Beneath the German lines, Woodward and his secret platoon of Australian tunnelers fight to defend a leaking labyrinth tunnel system packed with enough high explosive to char- change the course of war. So these were like the tunnelers, the guys that would like dig oh, no the way. underground trench systems. No way. And like it's crazy because, you know, you're digging and the carbon monoxide from like all the explosion explosions oh. was like extremely hazardous. Oh my god. So they would they would keep birds in like little canary birds in cages in the tunnels with them. <sighs> and they knew that it would be poisonous if the bird would die, so they needed to get out there like immediately. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's just a bunch of freaking these little canary birds, like, in the trenches. And I was like, oh, my God, they have pets. But then I, like, Googled it. And I was like, and it, Google was like, you know, you freaking idiot. Like, they had purpose. They weren't just, like, carrying animals down there for no reason. <laughs> wow, Google's rude. Yeah, no, super weird. It was that weird filter I put on. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, the, like, he's he, he's my idea of an awesome leader. Mm. Um, because, you know, it's funny because he's obviously a captain. And, like, he first gets to the tunnels, and, he, like, the movie opens up where he's, like, navigating through the tunnels. And he's like, hey, wh- wh- like, where are we? He's like, where? He's like, who are you? And he's like, I'm looking for this guy. And there's, like, these two guys, like, in the tunnels, and they're super dirty, and it's, like, super dark. And they're all whispering. They're like, you have to go back through that way. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> yeah, dude. And it's, like, it's so intense, because, like, the Germans are actively tunneling as well. Yeah. And, like, there's a scene in the movie where, like, the Ger- the Germans, like, basically... Uh, dig into their tunnels oh. and there's a guy and he has to like shoot the German coming through and then it blows up and it it buries them all. Oh my god! And yeah, dude, it's there's some gnarly scenes in there. Like if you're a claustrophobic guy, like you did not want to be there. Yeah, I don't know. But just, I don't know if I can watch this movie because that idea of claustrophobia, like that's very real to me. You know? Oh yeah, no, it's totally like they are just in these man-made tunnels and then like but he's such a like uh oliver woodward is such a good leader like he goes and he like runs into one of his college buddies which is another officer and like all the officers are like sitting in their barracks like in the tunnel systems that they dug out like these huge rooms that they're out of the way of danger and they're like hmm, look at these lower enlisted get out of here you know they're like <laughs> like super but then like he him as an officer he's like hey come on like there's a young guy that's like freaking out in the tunnels and he's like i don't want to fucking die and he's just like you come he's like you're gonna come with me and you like he's just like a nice guy mm. and he like truly loves his men and you could tell he'll do anything for him and just the officers like we should have put this movie on like the typical officer uh, mm. shit because like all those officers like don't give a like the other officers in the movie don't give a shit about the guys um, they're just like, yeah, you're all pawns. I'm over here drinking my tea. Someone is no. Why is that man not on watch? And it's like, okay, well, if he's over there, he's literally gonna die because they're about to blow it up. And he's like, get him over there. He's abandoning his post. Oh man. Yeah, but no, Beneath Hill Six. It was a really good. You should watch it, dude. It's awesome. Oh, that's cool, man. I'll have to give. I'll have to add that to my list. But uh, the one thing I'll say for our gamers out there is, I really appreciated Battlefield One, which came out, and that's all about World War One, and it. It mm. has different campaigns that you play through, single player campaigns that jump around the world, uh, that give like kind of more of a personal experience. Like it centers in on one soldier and they kind of have their own little story. And that's kind of like mm-hmm. the theme of the video game. It's like, you know, we were all real people. We existed, remember us and honor us, you know, for what we went nice, through. Dude. And, uh, it's super cool. If you haven't yet played Battlefield One, I highly recommend it if you want like a kind of a good video game style experience to, to world war one. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And then finally we had what they shall not grow old. I actually haven't seen this, Ooh, but I you, came across it yeah, you, and I saw it was Peter Jackson yeah. and I was like, Oh man, this is a documentary. And what Peter Jackson did is he went back and he re- digitally restored old world war one footage. And then he took, uh, and he, he restored it and he colorized it. And, uh, and That's he did awesome. a good job with it. And he, then he went and got interviews with the world war one veterans taken from like the fifties, sixties and seventies. He got audio and they basically narrate the entire movie. There's no, it's just them telling their story. It's super oh, cool. Man. It's very emotional. Uh, Peter Jackson does a great job of like 
taking you through from the beginning, like just before to the beginning, right? All the way through the, the end of the conflict, even a little bit kind of afterwards. And it's just there. It's just the conflict in their own words. And it's really cool, you know, to see the, he did a really good job colorizing it and, and they restored it with sound. So they had to like figure out what, what bombs sounded like, what the machine gun yeah. sounded like, what pe- you know, what the people sounded like and what unit they had to re- like go in and digitally restore like their uniforms so they could see what units they were from and where they might have been at in, in the conflict as a whole. Uh, super, super cool. It's, it's, they shall not grow is, is, is so appropriate because like I was saying, there's, you know, there's no World War One veterans around anymore. That's gone. They're all gone. You yeah, know? they're gone. So the only thing we have are the stories that they that they told and things that we have recorded. And this one is like some movies. You're just glad that they exist. You know what I mean? And this is one of them. Okay, now I definitely need to check this one out. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, that's on the list, dude. But yeah, that's World War One, folks. Moving on. Moving on to World War Two and. There is way too many to pick. I, on this well, list. Let's, here's the thing, man. I, let's challenge each other. The, here's the game. We can only pick one, and we have to defend. We can our only position. pick one. Yes. Wells Fargo presents one of the surest ways to grow your money: a Wells Fargo CD account, where you can earn a 5.00 percent annual percentage yield on an 11-month term with a minimum opening deposit of $5,000. Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com backslash CD rates to open a CD account and start growing your savings with us. Wells Fargo Bank, N.A., member FDIC. Yes. Okay. Oh, this is going to be hard. <laughs> Let's see here. All right, you go first, then. All right. Um, well, I could cheat and choose Band of Brothers, but I'm going to restrict myself. Uh, and I'm going to choose... I like how you just deleted it off the list. Yeah, well, it's it's on here twice. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but, uh, and I'm not going to choose the Pacific at all. Let's see. I'm going to do... I mean, it's it's almost feels like it's cheating to say, do Saving Private Ryan, but I'm going to choose Hacksaw Ridge. I'm going to choose Hacksaw okay. Ridge because... It's, I know you love that movie. I do, I do. And, and because you get to see the conflict, you get to see the brotherhood of war. Uh, it's the Pacific conflict, which uh, I don't I don't know if it was more brutal. I feel like, I don't know why, I just, I've heard so many brutal stories because the Japanese were brutal back then. Like, they yeah. were hardcore, like kamikaze, and they did not care about the lives of, of other, soul, you know, of their enemies. Yeah, they no. Went after it, you know. Uh, so I, I would say Hacksaw Ridge, uh, but it, it, just so you know, folks, I know you're yelling at me, you're shaking your fist and you're saving Saving Private Ryan. I, be, I I feel like Saving Private Ryan is like the Yankees of, uh, of, of the movie world, the World War II movie world. Like anybody would choose that. So I'm just trying to, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to challenge myself a little bit. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Cause Saving Private Ryan, we've, I, I mean, I don't want to talk about it anymore on the podcast. Yeah. We got, even though we, we, we are, we are asked, going to, Yeah, we need to have an asked and answered like section for movies that we can we are no longer allowed to talk about yeah it's like saving private ryan glory aliens uh, aliens <laughs> lord of the rings but i i think i'm gonna have to go with fury man yeah why is that yeah i'm I'm gonna have to pick fury just because i feel like it's one of a kind like there's not a lot of movies out there that take like the tanker yeah. perspective yeah. and it's it's still such a good movie and it shows like you know it shows the new guy. It shows the seasoned guy. It shows he has an arc. The new guy has an arc. Yep. He, you know, there's selfless sacrifice. There's camaraderie. There's war crimes. There's laughs. There's cries. Uh, I think it's just a really good movie. Yeah. I, I, I I like Fury, and I like Brad Pitt's haircut. Uh, uh, I like his haircut, too. He's got the... Yeah. The Literally, when Fury shape. came out, do you know how many people I saw get the Fury haircut? <laughs> Hundreds, hundreds of people got the Fury haircut after that movie came out. Um, but yeah, no, Inglorious, like it's because I've said Inglorious Bastards is like one of my top three, and that's also good, but I've talked about that one a lot. Yeah. And I, I know we've mentioned Fury, but I just wanted to hit it on the head and say that's a great World War II portrayal because it also has to deal with like the civilian sides of it. Yep. And like how they saw us. Um, so yeah, I'm going to pick Fury for World War II. Um, it's, I think that's an excellent movie. Actually, I got to rewatch it. You like horses? <laughs> I think we and it also mentions Africa like not a lot of uh, you know 
not a lot of World War II. It's always Europe. Yeah, they don't realize that like World War II actually was like Africa, then the Pacific, and right. you know, Europe. It was all over. Yeah, it was, it was a lot. There's very little about the Ottoman Empire. Or the Ottoman Empire was World War One. Um, yeah. Was that just World War One? Uh, so anyway, you know, if you could, you could definitely throw Patton on here because Patton, Patton. You could throw uh, Patton goes through the entire war. You know, uh, you could throw. Uh, I mean, this. I feel like we'll never stop making World War Two movies. <laughs> no, we can't. We should watch There's too much. We should watch Overlord for our 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 October Patreon. Uh, we should. Movie. That's a good one. All right, there it is. We're doing Overlord. All right, cool. Show up, uh, All right. subscribe to our Patreon, folks. That's for our tier three subscribers, our lifers. We're going to watch a live, yes. live stream. So. All right. Yep. See you guys then for Overlord. <laughs> but a cool. I think that'll do it for World War II, man. Because, like I said, there's way too many to pick. Yeah, man. Um, but let's move on to Korea, 1950 to 53. I'm so excited that I actually found a movie about it. <laughs> so, there's this not movie. Too many. <clears throat> no, there's not too many. But this has a twist. Uh-huh. It was so weird. It's a Korean film. So it's The Battle of Jang Sori. It was released in 2019. And it portray- it's like a true story about a unit of student soldiers on a diversionary mission for the Battle of Incheon huh. during the Korean War in 1950. But it's an all-Korean cast, except for Megan Fox. Really? Yes. That's so funny. It's so weird. Like, I was watching the trailer... And like, you know, I'm, this was a no shit Korean like film, like everything's in Korean. And then all of a sudden Megan Fox pops up and she's like, how are we going to save these boys? <laughs> <laughs> I started dying laughing. I was like, what? The? It's so random. It's so she's so random in it. Is, is it that should have been a cameo because her career kind of took a dive. So maybe she has found some work like in other countries. Yeah, it had to be because like it's pretty new. It's 2019, okay. uh, but the movie looks well made. It doesn't. It's like yeah, they definitely. You know how Korea has been like coming up on the up in like television and Hollywood. Korea's got some high quality content, man. Yeah, uh, you know, I I, I want to check this one out because I don't believe that Megan Fox is like is in it. Uh huh. Um, and she plays like I don't even know. She's like blonde in it, and <laughs> dude, <laughs> I don't know. I gotta watch it. But yeah, the Battle of Jangsuri. I finally found something that features the Korean War, but not from the U.S. side, uh, but from the Koreans. Well, you know, it's funny, man, because I would say my definitive Korean War movie. I mean, it, it it's not a, I Tegu Ki, which we which was in the game that we played uh in, in one of our other episodes. But Teguki, The Brotherhood of War, it's a 2004 film. It's a Korean Korean production about the Korean War. And mm. uh, I thought it was really, really good because one of the main ideas behind the Korean War was that it, it, tore, the, it tore the country in two. And so it's yeah. about two brothers. It's two brothers. Um, two brothers. Uh, that get it caught up in the conflict. And then through the course of event, one of them gets really – uh, I think he he they get separated, and the older one believes that the younger one was killed by I don't know mm. like an American bomb or something, and so yeah. he defects and he goes over to the North Korean side and becomes like their number one war hero, and then they end up meeting each other on the field of battle and they duke it out and it's and so it kind of it it jumps back and forth between the present and the past and then you know the last little bit is. The, the younger brother is still alive and he goes and they're they're doing like this thing where they're the north koreans are letting people come in and exhume bodies from battlefields so they can get their family members back yeah so they find he they find his brother he gets to go there and it's like he's like weeping over kind of like uh the loss of their of their brotherhood and so it's kind of in a broader perspective the loss of like the unity of korea you know yeah so, oh look at that very deep yeah, pretty wild, dude. But like, well, good. I got to check that one out too. There aren't. I, I'm. I was having a hard time finding U.S. productions uh, of Korean Korean war movies. Guess you just got to wait for Devotion, man. I know that. Then that will be that will be the definitive. Uh, yeah. I guess there. I guess there are some older ones. At least from U.S. perspective, right? There's MacArthur, and there's some older, uh, older ones uh, like '50s movies about the Korean War, but. I guess maybe we just kind of lost our lost interest <laughs> after a yeah. while. Yeah, it was only three years. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah, and then it didn't. It didn't really end in a victory or anything. 
it just ended in the like a okay, everybody stop. And then yeah, kind of it, left it, it was a it city. was a what was it a, a li- it was Armistice. like a lift fire. Yeah, or yeah, ceasefire. Yeah, Armistice. Yeah, it was a ceasefire and just nothing happened. Yeah, but oh, cool, that man. I was thinking of Vietnam. Speaking of Vietnam. Yeah. Speaking of Vietnam, be it fucking Nam! 59 through 75. <laughs> so okay, we got many there's movies. so many. So let's do, let's just both pick one and let's keep it short since we're boring everybody. No, they're having a great time and they're going to listen. They're having a great time. Let's even longer because we're going to go along because we're only in Vietnam, folks. We got a couple more, yeah, we're we got a couple more periods to go. But yeah, uh, I'm going to pick <laughs> because I'm, 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 patri- I'm a patriotic American. I, I'm going to pick uh, We Were Soldiers. Oh, okay. Because that was the it was the record of the first major engagement between us and the NVC, the North Viet Cong Army, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it's a cl- it's a great film. It's a well well done film, and it's just about the they got that grit and the brotherhood of the American Army, and how they stuck it out. They got totally totally almost overwhelmed, and I actually think historically speaking, they resisted and they got out of there, and then that same Vietnamese battalion or army went the next day and just totally wiped out a different american <laughs> a different american unit uh, yeah so but i mean it's uh it's like it's brutal it's it's like i remember when they they do they do danger close and they drop a a bomb like a fire bomb and then some of the americans get get into it and they try to the guy that's on fire like the correspondent or the 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 so he's like an asian dude and uh Barry Pepper plays the war correspondent and, and the guy's on fire and he goes to pick him up and the skin from his leg, his legs just peels off because he's, he's, he's freaking, it's freaking melted. Ugh. I, I would call, I think he's well done. Oh no. Oh, yeah. so, so rough. So that would be my pick for sure of, of my definitive, you know, definitive Vietnam movie. Um, yeah, uh, but that was, okay. that one takes place kind of, in the beginning of the conflict, like in the late fifties and that, that war went on for what until like the seventies, the mid seventies. Yeah. So I think I'm going to pick full metal jacket, man. Full metal metal jacket. jacket. Seven, six, two. <laughs> I think just cause it shows, you know, it's not just Vietnam. It's basic training. Half that movie it's- is just basic training. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, okay, what do they do to these guys? Like, it it tells, it tells like three different stories in one movie. Yeah, and uh, you know, it shows some of the good about Vietnam, but most of the bad. Yeah. Um, I mean, there was a lot of bad shit happening in Vietnam, but I mean, someone had to do it. Yeah. Uh, apparently. So yeah, there's a lot. Of, you know, just if I want to create like ultimate soldiers, they need to see full metal jacket. Cause that's exactly how I want you to be. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Which character? If they, if they like... run, they're Viet Cong. If they don't, if they don't run, they're well-disciplined Viet Cong. <laughs> that's when we get the, Hey GI, me love you long time. Yeah. Me love you long time. GI. I don't know. I just watched hamburger hill too. And that was brutal. Yeah. That was brutal. Um, so, but, but I'm going to go full metal jacket just cause there's so many iconic things from that movie. And, you know, it, it's like, he's a reporter, but he gets attached to all these dudes. And like, he gets to see like a lot of different units doing a lot of different things. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take full metal jacket for that one. Just cause it, sh- it tells a lot about Vietnam, not just, plus it shows like you can go on pass, like during the war, you could go on pass. Like not a lot of people knew that. Uh huh. I didn't even know that they're like in country. You can like, you know. Go take R and R. Well, back in then the, they the... had uh, they had like long deployments. Back then, we we think about like uh, four or five months deployments, nine month deployments. I mean, I know we got yeah, they had like twelve to fifteen. Yeah, and then you could stay there if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. We had there was a couple guys that just chose to stay and they just hung out there for years. Yeah, like who did uh, Mike Eckert? He was like, yeah, I just stayed. Mike there. Eckert, yeah, yeah, exactly. He was there for what, like two years? <laughs> yeah. I can see how that animal. would get if you if you are into what you're doing and that's like your element. It, it'd be kind of weird to go back and like, oh, now you have yeah, to why go work? back to all that to negativity? Because obviously, yeah, oh, why yeah, go back to nine to five? Yeah. Why go back to all those people that hate you? You know, yeah. there wasn't a big love for military back there like there is it now. Turned, I think public opinion kind of turned, and then the '60s they got all crazy there. You know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But uh, All right. okay, man, I respect your choice. Respect but you. yeah, let's move on. Let's keep going. Gulf War, 1990 to 91. We really, I guess we weren't in any real conflicts back then. I was going to put behind enemy lines somewhere along here, but that was Bosnia. That wasn't really an official conflict. That was just kind of well, us. With, 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 uh, <laughs> with uh, Owen Wilson. With Owen Wilson. And Gene Hack. Wow. Wow. Oh, 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 My no, plane's no, no, about it, to go it, down. It, 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 wow. No, 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 no. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. It's, oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Was, I press this to eject me? <laughs> I'm a pilot. <laughs> I'm a pilot now. Wow. Yeah, I uh, But no, go for it, dude. Yeah. Uh, I want to see this one a lot. I haven't seen it yet. Bravo Two Zero. Have you seen it? I have seen parts of it. I've seen, like, basically the last half where he... He right when he gets captured because it's like they had to abort their mission. They got discovered and they had to hoof it out of the country. And I think some of them made it, but then he he gets captured. And uh, the only part I remember from this movie, man, is when he's he's captured in Iraq and he's forced to clean Iraqi toilets, and they make him lick the poop off of his hands <laughs> to clean his hands. Oh, yep. Oh, lick lick the poop. Yep. Like yeah, he's like, ah, 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 hands. And he's like, uh, he has to like lick it off. Oh, it's so gross. Oh, that's gross. Yeah. But yeah, I want to see it because my buddy, like, we were teaching a class of how to, like, uh, pretty much, like, what it means to, like, establish fire superiority. And he, like, showed the scene where, like, they're about to get compromised and they all open up and he's like, coming, moving in front, moving in front. <laughs> you know, when they open up on him originally. Yeah, th- that's uh, that's the part I haven't seen. I've seen after that part. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's like, this is breaking contact. He's like, everybody watch this scene from Bravo Two Zero, and like, yeah, it's a it's a good scene too. Um, but uh, yeah, man, I got to check out that movie. But uh, Jarhead is obviously, I think, the pinnacle of the movies that represent the Gulf War. Yeah, yeah, because it happened so fast. Yeah, it, yeah, the Gulf War was was in and out. I mean, I. I I guess, uh, I guess it's so funny. I'm like, I'm never going to choose Jarhead, but I think Jarhead is probably a pretty good representation of maybe the feelings some soldiers had about the Gulf War because he goes that entire movie wanting to do his job. And at the very last second, they take it away from him. And then the war ends. And he's like, I never, he never got to fire his gun once. And, and then it's, there's this like kind of, it's based on a book and there's this kind of like, Maybe he's traumatized by it or something. He's like, we're still in the desert. And it just shows like a shot of them walking in the desert. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Super scarred. But uh, I mean, I'm a fan of Courage Under Fire. I would choose Courage Under Fire as far as encap- you know, not maybe not encapsulating the Gulf War, but kind of just a representation of like the equipment and uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I just like I just like the story. It's basically like a murder mystery. And you get the different perspectives on the same event from you know three or four different perspectives, and they all the characters act differently depending on who's telling the story. Mm, I don't think I've seen this one, dude. Oh, really? I know you've talked about it before, Meg but Ryan no, I have and, not seen. Uh, and and Denzel Washington. Yeah, no, I haven't dude, seen it. That's a must, one man. That's a must. You got it. They got a really skinny Matt Damon in that one. Uh, oh, I'm looking all, at pictures right now. Out. Yeah, I'll definitely have to check this one out. Um, because you have mentioned it before on this podcast. Yeah. That's and it was like, one. what, they like secretly, they kill her, right? Well, I mean, yeah. Or Denzel Washington's character like leaves her for dead, but no. then says something else happened. No, no, no. It, it basically, Denzel Washington is doing the investigation for her being recommended for the Medal of Honor. And so he goes yeah. around to her her guys in her unit. They did. They had crashed. Their helicopter had crashed, and then they were stuck there for a day and a night, and then rescued the next day. But she didn't make it, so they put her up for the Medal mm. of Honor. And then it was like a big political deal because it's a woman posthumously wore the Medal of Honor. But then he starts talking to different unit members, and their stories don't line up. So one guy says that uh. she was a coward, other guy said she was brave, and so you don't know the whole story. So he has to figure it out, and all the while he's dealing with his own. Uh, his own guilt and shame because in the beginning of the movie, he is a tank commander and during the initial push across the oil fields of Kuwait. Uh, mm-hmm. And he, uh, there's a mistake and he actually shoots and kills some of his own men. Uh, oh, but he's, man. cleared, he's cleared of all wrongdoing, but he's kind of racked with guilt. 
uh, yeah, sure. About what he did, like any normal person would feel. Yeah, so it's it's really good. And Meg Ryan, everybody does. Uh, Louis uh, Cuba Gooding, what? Not Cuba Gooding Jr. Lou Diamond Phillips is in it. Uh, who had a great? He did La Bamba back in the day. I don't know if you guys remember that, but anyway, uh, really good movie. Courage Under Fire. Super, super good performances. Okay, good man. Well, well, let's push on to Afghanistan. Afghanistan. This should be a ripe territory. It's twenty years. Yeah, it long. should. Yeah, it's 20 years long, and I mean, if you tuned into our GWAT episode, you probably know all of these, yeah. uh, but I think the one I would pick, absolutely, and you haven't seen this one yet, unfortunately, which you're going to see it, um, but The Outpost. Oh, man, you've talked about this so much, man, yeah. Yeah, I would pick The Outpost just because, I mean, we've talked about a lot of these, um, and The Outpost, but it like that is a great portrayal of you know two Medal of Honor recipients that you know fought in Coringal, I'm pretty sure the outpost is basically what like Restrepo and you know the Hornet's Nest and all these and Coringal these documentaries are made about. Um, but let me just confirm that so I don't. Yeah, um, is it? Is it? Is do it? An injustice. Restrepo is that the Coringal Valley, the outpost? Is that what let's it's see. about? Uh, uh, cop. I think it's cop let's Keating. See, the cop Keating, the outpost. Let's see. I gotta watch this movie. Wells Fargo presents one of the surest ways to grow your money. A Wells Fargo CD account, where you can earn a 5.00% annual percentage yield on an 11-month term with a minimum opening deposit of $5,000. Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com backslash CD rates to open a CD account and start growing your savings with us. Wells Fargo Bank, N.A., member FDIC. Yeah, it's really good, dude. It is. I'm pretty sure it's Cop Keating. Let's see. But it's, uh, yeah, Severed Soldiers. Yep. Combat Outpost Cop Keating. And then Cop Keating. I mean, while you're looking that up, there. my pick would definitely have to be for 12 Strong because it's about the initial invasion of Afghanistan when we had like a clear focus in what we were doing. You know, and it didn't yeah, after before it kind of got stretched out. But uh, I know we've talked about this a lot, but. Uh, yeah, it's uh that's that's my that's my pick for the Afghanistan war movie. That's a good I, one. Dude. I can't wait to find out who what what movies we make about Afghanistan after this. Like are they going to make a movie about the evacuation and everything that went on with that one? I doubt they'll make it anytime soon because of, you know, probably political reasons. But uh that would be a really interesting movie to see like how it all went down, why it went down yeah. the way it did. The bombing, you know, there was the, that was the guy. That, there was the suicide bomber that killed two hundred people plus thirteen marines. Yeah. Uh, so that's... okay, I stand corrected. It is not in Corangol. Camp Keating is somewhere else, but it was strategically located in a terrible location. Uh, uh, but it's pretty much the battle of Camp Keating, which was Camp crazy. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, it was in Kamdesh in Afghanistan. Uh... So. I'm wrong, but still, it's still my pick because I mean the fighting doesn't change. Uh, like they were overrun, crazy uh. amounts of people, and a lot of brave men did a lot of brave things. Um, and it that movie, I think, does some of the best job of showing like true uh, camaraderie between you know soldiers mm. in Afghanistan in the early push. Um, so yeah, that'll definitely be my cook, uh, my pick. You gotta watch it, Izzy. You got to. I got to. I got to. If I didn't have, if I didn't have to, do you know what I'm gonna do for you, Cameron? I'm picking up my phone right now. You guys can't see this, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put down on the morning of October third. That's the that's the Monday I get back from my honeymoon. I'm mm. gonna put in watch the outpost. Nice, dude. Yes. I cried like a little bitch at the end of it. Yeah, oh, well, now then you know if you cry, then I'm definitely going to cry. Oh, yeah. No, it's a really good movie. Yeah. They did very good. Um, nice. But okay, that's Afghanistan. Let's move to Iraq. Okay, Iraq. The Iraq War. The Iraq War. You, you were talking about this movie, or this TV show the other day, Mosul. Oh, that, no, it's a movie on Netflix. And oh, it's actually, a movie? I thought it was a TV show. Apart from American Sniper, well, and I've seen Mer American Sniper and Hurt Locker, so Mosul's great. Mosul would be a good one to put, uh, is a good one for this. I don't know if I would call it the definitive Iraq War movie, but uh, it's a great aftermath be because it takes place after America has pulled out 
and kind of ISIS is like kind of on the run. So it's like maybe maybe during like the Trump administration, right? Because there was a big push to get ISIS out. Yeah. But we weren't exactly there anymore, but we supported them with a lot of stuff. So it's about – basically it's it's a pretty straightforward story. It's about a kind of a police unit and these guys, they have some – they're on some sort of mission. You don't know what exactly they're doing. But they're heading through like enemy territory and like ISIS controlled territory and they're getting in all these fights. And, you know, one by one, they kind of get, they kind of get started to get taken out. And there's a young police officer that joins them. And he, he, you basically come to find out that uh, they're on like a very special personal mission and they're kind of going rogue. But it's a really, it's a really well told story. And there's no, there's no Americans in it. It just has to do with Iraqis. And uh, mm. I thought it was really well done. Have you ever seen The Wall? I auditioned for The Wall. <laughs> you auditioned for The Wall? I did. Uh, well, I'm glad you didn't get it. <laughs> Is it not good? I don't think it's good at all. Oh, okay. No. It's a smaller I film. mean, from a military perspective, like, it's not good at all. Oh, really? Yeah, it's got like, there's Aaron so Taylor many inaccuracies. Johnson. Yeah, and John Cena. And John Cena, and he gets trapped by a sniper, basically. Yeah, like a really good sniper. Yeah. But like he's talking to him on like a phone, like yeah, the sniper's like, kind of like taunting him and talking to him. Yeah, know? the entire movie. It's a little boring, I'll be honest. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just they like claim to be rangers, but like none of it adds up, and it's just like <laughs> they did not do their research for sure. Oh, that's um, too bad. It's too bad. It definitely had a lot of uh, a lot of uh, you got. I cannot think for the word it had potential. There potential, we go. Potential. Okay. It had a lot of potential, but yeah, they kind of just like sent it. But uh, no, I, I would pick Sandcastle. Sandcastle. Have you seen Sandcastle? Iraq War movie. Yeah, I think it was really good. Uh, because it literally shows it like shows it from you know the military standpoint. It's about like big army, um, but they're trying to work with the Afghani like citizens and like help them. But obviously, like there's a lot of Iraqis that don't want them there. So yeah. like the Iraqis that don't want them there are like trying to kill them, but killing other, uh, you know, innocent Iraqis and those Iraqis blame, instead of blaming the ones that are killing them, they blame the Americans cause they, they wouldn't be killed if they weren't like there, you know? Mm -hmm. And then this big army unit pretty much gets attached to an SF unit. So I think you'd like it. It has a, it has a big old sexy man in it. Um, uh, who plays the Witcher? Oh, Henry Cavill. Yeah, Henry Cavill plays oh, like Nicholas the team Holt's sergeant. In it too. Okay, cool. Yeah, Henry Cavill plays like the team sergeant. I think it's just a good movie. It, it, there's an arc too, like the new guy in the beginning. Um, it also has the guy from the new uh, from the new Maverick. Um, oh Top yeah, Gun. our favorite uh, our favorite pilot, Glenn Powell. Yeah, He's Glenn Powell, and he baby. plays. Yeah, he plays a doucher, dude. Uh, He's like uh, he plays that guy, but if he was enlisted infantry. <laughs> like, same character, like, straight douchebag, like, wears American flag, like, bandanas the entire time. And it's just like a, he's like a war junkie. And, uh, yeah, uh, but, yeah, it's a really good movie. They, like, basically try to basically get the Iraqis water, but the Iraqis keep bombing the dam where it gets them water. Uh... Um, it's like all the villagers are like fighting each other. It's like an internal struggle, but like the new guy is like really timid in the beginning. By the end of the movie, he's like a hardened fighter, and he's just like, "Let's get the fuck in there." Uh, and then uh, it's it's a, I actually really enjoyed watching it. Uh, uh, I gotta check it out. It, this looks like kind of more of like a gritty kind of maybe gray area kind of morally ambiguous kind of thing. It's it, you gotta give yeah. those their due, you know. Yeah, there it's there's definitely a lot of themes going on. It. It's just funny because it's uh the the sergeant major in the movie who's obviously like not doing anything on the ground anymore. He's always just saying it's a beautiful day to be infantry. <laughs> and by the end of the movie, the like the new private is like leaving because they're sending him home because he's like pretty much one of the only survivors left on his uh, squad. Oh no! Yeah, uh, because they got messed up, and then they're like sending him home because he's like, we need to get the fuck back in there. He's like, we need, and they're like, your your mission's over, son. And he's like, no, we need to get back in there. And he like turns around to the sergeant man and he's like, beautiful day to be infantry. <laughs> and then, yeah, it's a good, I thought it was a good movie. I thought it was definitely a good movie. You should check it out. That's cool, man. Yeah, I'll add that to my ever-growing list. But I think we're at the end of our list for this one. Yeah, we are at the end of this list. Finally, folks, Jeez. we've made it. We made We've it. made it to today. But we've I, made it to today. Here's what I want to know. I want to know 
what good, what movies you guys have if you're outside of the country or if you think that there are other movies or video games or TV shows we should have added let us know kind of like the definitive war movies for maybe that maybe tell a, a, a good representation of your country or a portion of your country's history I want to know stuff like that because I know we have an international audience this is kind of cool to hear people's different perspectives on that kind of stuff yeah absolutely we definitely want to know what you guys got going on if you got a dope movie that shows your country's military in a very positive light and see what you guys are about would love to see it um and some maybe some background too yeah but uh yeah let us know send us an email to pcfm podcast at gmail.com or on our instagram pcfm podcast you guys know the deal or on our patreon if you guys well, you, are you, definitely you guys are you, yeah patreon, you guys could send us yeah you guys are on our yeah. patreon so just shoot us a comment or a message <laughs> Um, but we have a question, um, and this one comes to us from Chris Murphy, and he wants to know, did you guys have a specific person in the military you looked up to, hmm. and how did they influence you? Hmm. That's a great question. That's a good question, man. Um, it is a good question. Now, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to put slice this into two parts, the before I joined the military, and then while I was in the military. Because hmm. I feel like for before the military it was like pop culture influence right yeah like certain movies like black hawk down i watched right before i i went in um there's i'm trying to think of other other movies but black hawk down was definitely like a like a positively influenced me like because i because i just saw like the brotherhood the camaraderie and i thought yeah, that sure. was such a special thing um but uh a specific person, a specific person I looked up to in the military. Well, I know that I, I definitely looked up to my, my second team sergeant, Tom. Uh, I, I've said it before. I'll say it again. He's, he was the best leader of men that I ever had the pleasure of serving with. He knew how to lead. He, he seemed like he knew everything, which made it mm. very, he made him very like a comfort to be around. Cause you knew if you had a question, he would have an answer for you. Uh, and he, mm -hmm. and even by the time that I was, by the time I joined the military, he had already been in the military, maybe like, like 20 years. Like he stayed oh, an wow. extra five, like he stayed a long time. And now I think he's yeah. even doing contracting work. <laughs> so he's still doing Damn. it. He's a lifer, huh? Yeah. So he influenced me in that I, it gave me a great desire to aspire to be a good leader. And it gave me a great example of what good leadership looks like. That's great, man. You know, I was pretty fortunate enough to have you know my first two team leaders well i will always give them the credit that made me the ranger i am today um as well as some of the buddies that i was with just because they gave me that push um but yeah first names was billy and the other one was robert or rob <laughs> and uh you know they were like yin and yang dude so one was like super disciplined and by the book and you know he knew how to do administrative stuff and you know he knew the job and he knew what was expected and then the other one was tactically just the most proficient person that i've ever seen in the entire military mm. but one was very emotional and the other one wasn't uh, so i kind of got like both uh both kind of snidbits of it and uh you know, they. I think they were just the power team of team leaders and I learned so much from both of them. So I really looked up to those dudes and they're actually both still in. Um, and uh, really? yeah, they're doing really good. Jeez. That's amazing. But yeah, dude, they're, they're amazing people. Um, yeah, I definitely cool. didn't dedicate pretty much all my military success to those two guys because they showed me exactly what you need to be like in order to be successful in the army. Mm. So yeah, shout out to those two guys. Um, but uh, now, yeah, I don't know now. I guess I look up to you, Izzy. <laughs> Literally, because I'm just taller than you. Yeah, because you're taller than me, and you have you look very young for a 42 year old man. <laughs> so I need to you, take your uh, your skincare routine. That's right. But uh, yeah, those are those two guys. I owe it a lot, and yeah, I still look up to them to this day. Um, right on, man. But cool. All right, let's transition to our game, and I am the game master now. This might be, you know, I was writing this game and I couldn't figure out the thing, so it might be a little challenging. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right that's nothing new yeah but this game is called get some and i don't know why i named it that because uh, after i finished the game i was like that title is not very fitting <laughs> um but since we're talking about wars i figured it was only right to see how well you know them okay. for this game i'm going to give you the name of a war 
and you're going to tell me the main parties involved. Oh. Bonus points if you can give me a winner and a loser. Oh, I that's... forgot to mention, they're not all U.S. conflicts. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh man. Oh, uh, yeah. I actually like so, the premise. I like the, the Yeah, good the premise, setup. but like I was making this, and I was like, sheesh. Because some of these, a lot of these wars are like, 30 people versus like six and it's so like you're I'm talking not about specific do. conflicts like a specific like yeah. the siege of whatever or the battle of this that the other well just a war okay. no not battles there's too many battles oh, okay. but uh i just did like straight up wars okay. but so look for example here's the warm-up the french and indian war uh that was between uh america uh Fr- and france essentially and and the native americans i guess but they were kind of taking both sides Sort of right. Sort of right. It says, and this is all info I've gathered from the internet. The war was fought between Great Britain and France and their colonists. Oh, so, yeah, America. Because yeah, they weren't a country they yet. They weren't a country yet. You're right. That was Britain and yeah. France. Yeah, so Great Britain and France and their colonists, as well as Native American tribes. They fought over territories and expansion throughout North America. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, I, I, so I America wasn't a country yet. So, technically, all the colonists were for Great Britain and you know France. Yeah, we were so. still British, British subjects at that point. Yes. All right. Cool. Oh, but you get you get the premise, right? Yeah, I get the premise. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Here we go. Round one's my favorite one because I love this war. The Rhodesian Bush Wars, 1964 to 1979. The Rhodesian Bush Wars, 1964 to 1969? 1979. 1979. Rhodesian Bush Wars. You've never heard of the Rhodesian Bush Wars? Oh, man. I thought you were going oh. to go to... To Vietnam or, or like, you know, to oh, me. No. but uh, Rhodesian, Rhodesian, that's, is that in Africa? Oh, man. It used to be. Oh, man. Rhodesia is not a country anymore. Oh, it's not a country anymore. Oh, but it was. In it's 60s. Zimbabwe now. Oh, it's Zimbabwe now. Dude, I've never even heard of this conflict, man. Really? Okay. Yeah. It's actually look into it because the Rhodesians were crazy. <laughs> okay. So that is a affirmative on the give up. <laughs> yes, that's affirmative. Yeah. Okay, so the Rhodesian Bush Wars. The conflict pitted three forces against one another. The Rhodesian white minority-led government of Ian Smith, later the Zimbabwe Rhodesian government, uh, the Zimbabwe African National Liberation Army, and the and then the Zimbabwe People's Revolutionary Army of Joshua Nakama and Zimbabwe African People's Union. <laughs> it was just, look up, all you got to do is look up pictures of the Bush Wars and you'll see why it was awesome. Because it was just a bunch of white dudes running around in, like, short shorts and hiking boots with, like, basically just uh, browning machine guns. Dude. And it was nuts. Rhodesian SAS. Dude, this is crazy, man. I'll have to check this out. I don't know. I, I've, I wonder if there have been any movies about it. I hope so. Uh, I mean, it, ask administrative results. His entire <laughs> persona is around Rhodesian. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But, Okay. Let's move on to round two. All right. Let's see if you get this one. The Hundred Years' War, 1337 to 1453. Oh, brother. I'm going to say that's Great Britain and France. You are correct. Uh, Nice, dude. Yes, the long struggle between England and France over a succession of the French throne that lasted lasted 116 years. Oh, okay. Isn't that crazy? Nice, dude. Hundred Years' War, golly. Yeah. Okay, round three. The Persian Gulf War. Persian Gulf War, that was between the United States and Iraq when Iraq uh, basically, you know, invaded Kuwait and then we went in there and kicked him out. Okay, nice. Bonus points, can you name me a couple of the U.S.? Because it was a coalition of countries. I'm going to say... Bonus points if you could name me a few other ones that were involved. uh, Great Britain... Uh, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got Britain, and there was also Egypt and France oh, that Egypt I have and here. France. Okay, All right. yeah, nice, dude. Okay, nice. you, you got it. You got it. I'll give it to you. And then this is the last one. Uh, and this is probably the greatest war that's ever been fought: the Emu War of nineteen thirty-two. <laughs> the Emu War of nineteen thirty-two. <laughs> That's so funny because that's right in between World War One and World War Two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, emus. Where where are emus at? They're kind of all over the place, aren't they? <laughs> Africa. 
or maybe South America. I'm going to say South America and I'm going to say Brazil and 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 Argentina. I don't know. <laughs> okay, man. That is incorrect. You just wanted to tell the world about the Great Emu War. I did because it's actually it's a real thing. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, look it up. Oh my gosh. So the Australian government launched a full-scale military operation to com- to combat the flightless birds known as emu in the country's western front. <laughs> Ultimately, the birds' vigor became too great for the Australians, and they were forced to surrender. What? <laughs> we, the Australians lost the emu they war? They lost the emu war. Oh, yeah. my goodness. They lost against the flightless bird. Oh, my goodness. Well, what happened? Are they, is Australia just totally overrun with emus now? I don't know. After World War One, like all these soldiers came back, and they they this was right before the Great Depression, so they couldn't afford to pay them like pensions. Oh. So they basically employed them to fight the country's birds because they were like way overpopulated, uh. and like they just couldn't do it. They just like <laughs> they just could not stop the emus. <laughs> there was a second attempt. I'm looking at the wiki right now. Oh my God. <laughs> there was a second attempt. Jeez, the Great Emu War. There's got to somebody's got to make a movie about that someday. That would be great. Not Australia. Would Australia would be too embarrassed to talk about it. Yeah, no, no way. They don't want to be known for losing against emus. Uh, emus aren't even as cool as ostriches. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, and the the fact that they're called life or flightless birds like means that like they can run away. You know, but they can't fly, so you got <laughs> you should have an advantage, you know. And that's like all birds can do is like fly. Yeah, <laughs> like these ones just can't. They like put their heads in the ground, and that's it. Yeah, those are ostriches, oh. but uh, yeah, emus oh, look like ostriches. ostriches. Okay, yeah, they do. Well, patrons, we hope you enjoyed this exclusive one. Went a little bit over on time, but that is perfectly okay, that's and that is exactly you get. why you get that extra content. You get the extra content. That's exactly why we appreciate you. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Like like we said earlier, let us know if there's anything you want to tell us about some wars in your country that you know really represent your people. Um, yeah, you guys just keep on doing your thing. We really appreciate you. Yeah, take care, folks. Uh, we will see you on the next one. Key music for oh Overlord. Overlord. Yeah, yeah. Overlord. Don't cue music yet. Oh, Don't cue music. We'll watch yeah. Overlord for our October movie. So. For all you lifer patrons, uh, it's coming, baby. It's coming. Now, cue music. Cue music. What's going on, everybody? You just listened to the free version of the PCFM podcast. If you want full-length versions of podcast episodes, plus much, much more, head on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash PCFM podcast. That is right, Israel. If you want access to this full episode, you have to subscribe to the Fuzzy Private tier, which is our cheapest tier on Patreon at $5 a month. But if you are interested in a little bit more, We also have the Salty Sergeant tier at $8 a month and the Lifer tier at $12 a month. So hopefully we will see you there, PCFM family. Cue music. Wells Fargo presents one of the surest ways to grow your money. A Wells Fargo CD account where you can earn a 5.00% annual percentage yield on an 11-month term with a minimum opening deposit of $5,000. Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com backslash CD rates to open a CD account and start growing your savings with us. Wells Fargo Bank, N.A., member FDIC.